Remember Me is an action-adventure video game developed by Don't Nod Entertainment and published by Capcom. It was released worldwide in June 2013 for Microsoft Windows, PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. The game's plot focuses on Nyland, a memory hunter working for an underground resistance called the Errorists. When the game starts, she has been stripped of nearly all her memories by megacorporation Memorize. With the help of a mysterious man named Edge, she goes on a quest to bring down Memorize and recover her lost memories. Throughout the story, she is permitted to use her memory remix power to ultimately refurbish people's recollections. The combat consists of a modified combo system called Pressin. Remember Me was developed as the debut project of Don't Nod Entertainment, with one of the company's founding members Jean Maxime Morris as its director. Part of his goal for the game was to create a thought-provoking narrative, and eventually settled on a female protagonist to help convey the story's themes. Originally a PlayStation 3 exclusive under Sony titled Adrift, it was cancelled in 2011 and later purchased by Capcom which resurrected it as a multi-platform game. General praise was given for the world design, Olivier Derivier's soundtrack, the ambition of the story and the memory remix segments, while the main criticisms laid against other aspects of the story, poor design choices and formulaic combat. Gameplay Remember Me features platforming, exploration and melee combat. The game is played as Nylon from a third-person view and introduces the mechanic of memory remixing, entering and rearranging a target's memories to manipulate them. Players accomplish this by replaying a memory and modifying details to change the target's recollection of the outcome. Another key mechanic of the gameplay is stealing memories from certain targets and using points called remembranes to replay the memory in real time. This is often needed to proceed through the game or avoid hazards otherwise hidden from the player. When the player is low on health, the screen will glitch until a sufficient amount of health is regained. On occasion, Nylon encounters puzzles in the form of riddles she must solve to unlock doors so as to further progress in the story. In terms of combat, the game allows players to create and customize their own move combos in the Combo Lab, which uses four categories of fighting moves called pressins. This is done by chaining them together, made possible through earning PMP procedural mastering power, with a limit of four combos being active at any one time. The pressin moves are region, healing, power, damage, chain, duplication and doubling of previous moves, and cooldown, regeneration of s pressin energy. There are 50,000 possible pressin combinations. Five s pressin moves will be made available to the player over the course of the game. The moves enable them to do things like stun groups of enemies, move at high speed and land more hits, or turn hostile robots into allies which then self-destruct. Players also have access to projectile-based weapons like the Spammer and Junk Bolt. Synopsis Setting The game is set in the year 2084, in a futuristic version of Paris called Neo Paris, where the Memorize Corporation has invented a new brain implant called Sensin, which enables 99% of the population to upload and share their memories on the net, as well as remove unhappy or unpleasant memories. This establishes Memorize as a surveillance state, which leads a small group of rebels by the name of errorists to attempt to bring down the corporation. The invention of the Sensen has also resulted in the creation of Leapers, memory-addicted humans who have absorbed so many memories that their Sensen has degraded and they have mutated into subhuman form, now living in the sewers of Neo Paris. Topic. Plot The game begins as Nylon Kezia Burroughs, an errorist imprisoned in the Bastille Fortress, is having almost all her memory wiped by Memorize. As she is taken to have the last of her memories wiped, a mysterious man called Edge, the leader of the errorists and a man she only hears over her comm device, helps her escape. Edge tells her that she is an errorist with the gift of both stealing and remixing memories. After escaping into the slums of Neo Paris, Nylon encounters Tommy, a fellow errorist. Nylon and Tommy are attacked by Olga Sadova, a bounty hunter chasing Nylon. Nylon dives into Olga's mind and remixes her memory to make Olga believe that her husband was killed by a memorized doctor. 
She then becomes an errorist ally, and transports Nylon to her first destination. Arriving in the San Michel district, Nylon, who is aided by another errorist codenamed Bad Request, is told by Edge to steal secret codes from Kaori Sheridan, Neo Paris's top architect. After retrieving and uploading the codes to Edge, he uses them to open the San Michel Dam, flooding the district. Due to the flood draining out the slums, Nylon is able to infiltrate the Bastille and heads to the memory servers to free the stored memories of herself and the inmates while taking down Madame, the sadistic manager of the Bastille. With Madame defeated, Nylon releases the memories of the inmates and partially regains some of her own. She remembers the crime that landed her in the Bastille. On a mission, Nylon remixed the mind of a memorized commander and made him believe he had killed his girlfriend. The altered memory pushed him to commit suicide. Nylon reluctantly goes along with Edge's next plan, to remix the CEO of Memorize, Skyla Cartier-Wells, to make her see the harm her company's technology is causing. Nylon makes her way into Skyla's office and enters her mind, remixing the memory of a car crash which left her with a bitter taste against the world. As she changes the memory to make Skyla a more compassionate person, Nylon discovers that she is Skyla's daughter. Nylon is then told by Edge to head for the Bastille basements to save Bad Request, who has been taken captive. She finds Bad Request, but discovers that his memory has been fully wiped. It is revealed that memorized scientist Dr. Quaid means to control the Leapers through their sensons and thus breed a private army for memorize. However, Johnny Greenteeth, a former co-worker of Quaid's who was experimented on and turned into a Leaper, kills Quaid and prepares to self-destruct the Bastille. Bad Request helps Nylon take down Johnny at the cost of his life and Nylon escapes the destroyed facility. With all of Memorize's secret operations taken down, Edge presses Nylon to find the Conception Cube, Memorize's central base, and destroy H30, the Memorize central server. Once there, she encounters her father, Charles Cartier Wells, the creator of the Sensons. Upon finding him, she sees that, fueled by the car accident that injured his wife, he has become lost in a dream of an ideal world free from painful memories, all inspired by the desire to help Nylon forget about the accident. Nylon makes him see the harm his technology causes, and Skyla arrives to convince Charles to help Nylon enter the central server. Once in the presence of the central server, it is revealed to Nylon that Edge is a self-aware entity created by the amalgamation of unwanted memories within H30. Nylon, who unwittingly started Edge with the memories of her unhappy childhood, enters the server and, at H30, Edge's will, she destroys him and releases the memories back into the general population. As the memories are released, Nylon remembers Edge's words about the mind being a fortress, and says that Edge died to remind people that memories should not become open to all, and that painful memories should be lived with rather than forcibly removed. She comes to the conclusion that outside her now restored mind she has a family again and a damaged world to heal. Topic. Development Development of the game began in 2008 when Don't Nod Entertainment was formed. Initially called Adrift, the original concept of the game was a world flooded from global warming, with a key gameplay mechanic being the player character using jet skis to navigate a coastal city. Later, the team became interested in the concept of memory as a central theme and redesigned the game accordingly, although game director Jean-Maxime Morris was reluctant to set the game in Paris since the studio was based there. It was originally developed as a role-playing game with Sony publishing it exclusively for the PlayStation 3, starting full development in February 2010. Following creative disagreements between Don't Nod and Sony, and the subsequent cancellation of the project in February 2011 because of budget cuts, the project was presented at the 2011 Gamescom Trade Fair in the hope that it would garner the attention necessary to secure another publishing deal. Capcom purchased the intellectual property in 2012 and provided funding for the project, reimagining it as an action adventure game for release on multiple platforms. The game's theme was inspired by the social network sites that abound in the modern world, with Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter cited as examples. Morris explained that while some elements looked fantastical, the game was grounded in the real world in terms of how social networking might evolve over the coming decades. Remember Me was considered to be the digital view of human identity compared to Don't Nod's Life is Strange, its analog counterpart. The game was influenced by classic cyberpunk anime such as Akira and Ghost in the Shell, and one of the literary works referenced in the game is George Orwell's novel 1984. 
When asked in an interview why he made the protagonist a woman, Morris replied that he wanted a game in the cyberpunk genre that was more about emotion, intimacy, identity, and the way technology would intersect those. So it made more sense for the player character to be a woman. However, when the game was shown to potential publishers, many were discouraged from backing the project, saying that a male character would be more successful. One of the challenges with designing Nylon was also creating a protagonist that was not over sexualized or ineffective. The music was composed by Olivier Derivier, who recorded the score with a 70 piece orchestra, then modified and changed it using electronic equipment. In an interview with Game Informer, Derivier said, during my first contact with the game, I was quite confused by so much information and I felt the music should reflect this confusion." Derivier disclosed that players would not hear the main theme until the end of the game, given that it is scattered in pieces through the rest of the score to reflect the nature of the game and the story of Nylon. For his work, Derivier was awarded the 2013 IFMCA Award for Best Original Score for a Video Game or Interactive Media. Remember Me was created with Unreal Engine 3 to lessen the workload involved in making a new intellectual property with a nascent studio of just under 100 employees. To evaluate the engine, Don't Nod collaborated with Epic Games' engineering team at various stages during production. Reception Remember Me received mixed or average reviews, according to Metacritic. In 2017, The Daily Telegraph named Remember Me one of the best cyberpunk video games. The world design, soundtrack and plot were praised, while aspects of the story, design choices and combat were criticized. Edge staff lauded Nylon as a powerhouse of a protagonist for possessing a blend of character traits that made her instantly likable, and the story of reclaiming her lost memories was praised as well. The puzzles were said to be fresh and thought-provoking. Eurogamer's Tom Bramwell appreciated Don't Nod's work on the refreshing combat system. He felt the memory remix sequences were absorbing and said the portrayal of technology being abused was handled well. According to Ben Reeves of Game Informer, Remember Me's memory remixes constituted the highlight of the game, and the soundtrack was also subject to enjoyment. Kevin Van Nord at GameSpot was satisfied with the main character, calling her a great heroine who is both powerful and vulnerable. The premise and general setting were commended, with the musical soundtrack appraised as superb. Ryan Taljonik at GamesRadar wrote favorably of the city setting and noted that it was rich in detail. Taljonik agreed that the memory remix held the most excitement of all the features in the game. Justin Spear of GameTrailers thought Remember Me presented its concept with fascinating and ridiculous elements, while the manipulation of minds with the memory remix was described as rewarding. IGN's Daniel Krupa admired the ambition of the game. Neo Paris was considered vibrant and distinctive, and as with the rest of reviewers, he praised the ability to remix memories. Ludwig Keatsman at Joystick approved of Nylon's power to manipulate memories, wishing that there were more opportunities to use it. Staff writing for OPM UK opined that the futuristic setting was astonishing and visually arresting. Arthur Gies of Polygon endorsed the game world, story and protagonist as its most positive aspects. He argued that the combo modification system set apart an otherwise predictable combat system. Gies felt the soundtrack deserved recognition for its well-written and unique style, which he thought excellently complemented the central theme. Conversely, Edge staff complained that characters other than Nylon were weaker overall. The design of the Presence combos was thought to be flawed, as the rate at which one unlocks them was too slow to use them until the final hours of the game. Though Bramwell found engagement in the first few hours, he said that the later parts of the story suffered from too many science fiction elements. The absence of external motivation for the main character was also disparaged. Reeves was dissatisfied with the characters, whose world he said was more interesting than they were, and the story was berated for being uninspired. Van Noord observed that the game was held back by an unfulfilling story and sub-par level design. The dialogue and metaphors were criticized for dimming the story's potential. Tal Jonik also disliked the dialogue, with overwhelming jargon noted as one of its chief offenses. The exploration was deemed restrictive, the level design claustrophobic, and the combat system stiff. 
Krupa was unimpressed with the action, which he felt lacked variation and was not well executed. His delight in the setting led to disappointment with the limited exploration of it. The lack of memory remixes received reproval as well. Keatsman declared Remember Me as a listless and mediocre action game, whose appearance held more value than its performance, and objected to the combat for being stilted and void of excitement. PlayStation official magazine, UK staff became quickly disenchanted with the game as it delved into generic fighting. Topic. Sales The game became a Capcom platinum title, with more than one million copies sold. Its inclusion on PlayStation Plus accumulated more than two million players, causing it to become the second most downloaded PlayStation Plus title in Europe. Topic. Other media Prior to the game's release, an official prelude story was published by way of a multimedia website. The interactive site was depicted as the diary of Antoine Cartier-Wells, founder of the Memorize Corporation and creator of the Sensen Brain Implant, and it tells the story of Memorize during the 100 years preceding the start of the game. At the time of the game's release, a 24-page print comic book written by Matt Kint and illustrated by Matthew Southworth was released by Dark Horse Comics, as an exclusive bonus item for those who pre-ordered the game from GameStop. Dark Horse later published a 184-page hardcover book featuring concept art and developer commentary. On 20 June 2013, another official prelude story was published, this time set months before the start of the game, and centering on the character of Nyland. Titled The Pandora Archive, it was written by British novelist Scott Harrison and published by Capcom as an e-book. Sequel On 10 March 2015, Don't Nod announced they had already completed the story for a possible sequel, Remember Me Too. Don't Nod creative director Jean Maxime Morris said. We know what we would do for Remember Me Too. The main story has been written we know what we would add to the recipe. We know what we would fix. It's a game that's ready to be made, but that decision is Capcom's to make. However, Morris added that Don't Not intended to work on another season of Life is Strange before proceeding with the sequel to Remember Me. A sequel is reportedly no longer viable with Capcom, Don't Nod CEO Oscar Gilbert admitted that while Remember Me did okay. Only Life is Strange's unexpected success saved the company from a very difficult financial situation. <laughs> <laughs> Notes <laughs>